I'm not saying I'm a prophet, I'm speaking for what it's worth. These lyrics define my prayers and these battles cause I'm a church. I'm not saying I'm a prophet, I'm speaking for what it's worth. These lyrics define my prayers and these battles cause I'm a church. Hi, this is Karen Ann Harlos. Most materials used are available to the general public at lpedia.org, particularly the LP News issues, which are archived in full. Other items used may be things purchased by me for my personal collection, but I am more than happy to make any of them available as well to any researcher. All party items are public. If you found this disclaimer annoying, you can thank some salty bitches in Colorado. Okay, everyone. Um, hopefully you can hear me. I'm always paranoid about my mic now, but I'll monitor the chat. Um, Wayne, who is just like the most fantastic man on earth, um, did some work on my studio for me and mounted, like you'll notice before, I don't have the mic stand in the background where you can see my overhead boom. Uh, he mounted, mounted it up, up top for me. So, hello everyone, Julian, I'm so glad to see you, and Lindsay and Dave, and there's others I can see. I've got a little spy control panel here, but you haven't posted in chat. I've got a lot of stuff for you today. I'm not sure if we're going to get through it all. I have my copies here. I didn't do much advanced preparation and I do that for two reasons a because I'm really busy so I'm not gonna lie and say oh it was completely a choice but also you know because I'm old even though I've seen all this before I forget and I like sharing kind of my contemporaneous reactions as I relearn it again with you guys because if I'm gonna do a lot of preparation I might as well just pre-record it I like having the community atmosphere so if you remember last time, I had a couple clips I wanted to play for you guys, but I fucked up the settings and they didn't work. They should work this time, but I need to give you fair warning. These are excerpts from the 1972 convention. The tapes were in D. Frank Robinson's basement not preserved in any kind of archive way. The audio quality is absolutely shitty. So you're going to have to struggle to hear it. But appreciate, uh, let me set it up for you a bit. This is from, again, the 1972 convention. These are the only tapes that exist of it. They were on those little reel-to-reels. The fact that they even exist at all is a miracle. The tape recorder was just a little piece of shit tape recorder that was way over in the corner. Again, this is the first convention where they just, I'm not going to say they threw it together because they obviously organized, but we're talking 1972. And a bunch of young guys, you know, mostly guys, there was women there as well, who were just eager to take on the world. So the first clip, and I'm going to play them back to back. The first clip is Tony Nathan. You're going to really, really struggle to hear her. So I'm going to tell you what she is going to say because I want you to listen more to her tone and her spirit more so than what she's saying. I had told you last time, but I'll, I'll set it up again. Um, there was a debate on the floor as to whether the party should adopt the statement of principles first or the platform plank first. And Tony Nathan got so incensed over this and basically had said, we will be the laughing stock of the world if we adopt planks without first specifying our principles and the way she got all lathered up about it maybe I'm flattering myself but it reminded me of how lathered up I get at convention the second clip is John Hospers if you've never heard John Hospers before he has the most beautiful voice again very very bad recording but I have to tell you, and you guys can call me the biggest geek on the planet if you want. You know how much the Statement of Principles means to me. When I first heard this clip, which would have been the first time that the Statement of Principles was ever spoken aloud, he was presenting it to the convention, hoping it would be adopted. I cried. I literally did. 
and to me i don't know it was just like this voice from history and he's he's deceased and it reached me across those 50 years even though the audio is so bad but still i think it's quite meaningful so i'm going to play those two clips and then i will come back to you guys and hopefully they will work this time god willing here we go and i've turned them up as much as i can again sorry 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 for the bad audio quality we, the members of the Libertarian Party, challenge the public enemies to state and defend the rights of individuals. We hold that each individual has the right to exercise sole dominion over his own life and the right to live his life in whatever manner he chooses, so long as he does not forcibly interfere with the equal rights of others to live their lives in whatever manner they choose. Governments throughout the world have regularly operated on the opposite principle, that the state has the right to dispose of the lives of individuals and the fruits of their labor. Even within the United States, whose government is less totalitarian than most others, all political parties, other than our own, grant to the government the right to regulate the life of the individual and seize the fruits of his labor without his consent. We, on the contrary, deny the right of any government to do these things and hold that the sole function of government is the protection of the rights of individuals, namely, one, the right to life, and accordingly we support legislation prohibiting the initiation of force against others, such as killing, maiming, injuring, and all forms of physical assault on life and limb. Two, the right of liberty of speech and action, and accordingly we oppose all attempts by government to abridge the freedom of speech and press, as well as government censorship in any form. And three, the right to property, and accordingly we oppose all government interference with private property, such as confiscation, nationalization, and eminent domain, and support legislation which prohibits robbery, trespass, fraud, and misrepresentation. This government has only one legitimate function, the protection of individual rights. We oppose any encroachment by government into the areas of voluntary or contractual relations among individuals. Men should be left free by government to deal with one another as free traders on a free market. The consequence is the only economic system compatible with men's rights is not been fair capitalism. Okay, and look, I got my side camera to work, which is funny. The audio or video capture card I had for this, which kept freezing up, was the expensive Elgato Cam Link. That shit's going back. This is the $15 cheapo one, and it actually works. Okay, so I hope you could at least hear some of that and really just got a sense for the history that really was a voice speaking to you from the past of the birth of our party. We are in the unbroken line of succession from that speech of John Hospers because the statement of principle still exists today and still guides us today. So what we're first going to deal with is not the statement of principles. We're going to go through a couple platforms, or at least in part. We might not be able to do them all. We'll see how we go, and I'll see how the comments go. The first one we're going to deal with is, and I'll be putting it on the screen. Here we go. Yeah, the temporary platform of the Libertarian Party. So this is the platform they went into convention with. This is the platform that thousands and thousands of copies were distributed prior to this convention. And then at that convention, they then adopted the 1972 platform. And it's been a while since I've examined these two. And what I want to do is see how they differ. To see how well they guessed with the temporary. And what happened with the 1972 and we will really get a good feel for the birth of this party I think in doing this and I hope you guys will find it interesting if it starts to get boring we'll go faster or whatever it's been a while since I've looked at these and I'm, I'm just gonna give you an overview of what I hope to do tonight if it gets too long we'll continue this maybe another well not maybe another night definitely another night then I'm gonna go through for you 
a story about the statement of principles. That's a little bit woo. I don't know if you know what I mean by woo. By woo, I mean like <laughs> woo is, uh, you know, people see the supernatural and everything, you know, or, you know, they read their horoscope, you know, that sort of thing. That's woo. There's a little bit of woo that goes on here. And I'm a very, very skeptical person and I don't believe in woo, but here's, there's going to be some woo I believe in and that we will then go in more depth into the statement of principles. So that's the roadmap for tonight. Whether we get entirely to there is another story. And again, how this is going to go, I am flying by the seat of my pants. So um, it's appropriate since I said I'm flying, I'm wearing my Batwing shirt. <laughs> Believe it or not, did you see that crazy lady? I think her name's Paula White. If you like Paula White, I'm so sorry I called her crazy, but don't come for me. She's crazy. She is uh, Trump's spiritual advisor and on the night of the election she did that crazy speech where she started speaking in tongues and stuff but she had the coolest batwing top on that was like a light brown and i loved it so much i had to find something similar so paula white this shirt is for you so now let's go through or at least start to go through the temporary platform shall we okay i've got it up on the screen and I'm taking a look at comments. Julian, I am so glad. I, I, I so glad that gave you chills. It gave me chills when I first heard it because I was just picturing myself there. And I don't know, it spoke to me. The import of it just, it, you know, whatever. There's going to be some other things that are going to give you chills if that gave you chills. But anyway, I'm glad you appreciated it. Um, it's, there's some regrets I have in the party and one of the two of the regrets. Well, there's a lot of them, but three of them come up tonight. And they are that I never got to meet Tony Nathan, John Hospers or David Nolan. And uh, I was only four years shy of meeting David Nolan. He passed away in 2010 suddenly of a heart attack while he was driving in Arizona. Uh, there, I'll get into that on the woo part. All right, so let's take a look here at the temporary platform where I have the copy I printed out. Um, this is in a little booklet, as you can tell. I have a bunch of copies of these. We might be auctioning some off for um, a fundraiser uh, for the party. And you can see they got the little tan staffle. There ain't no such thing as a free lunch logo on the front. It says the party of principal. So that was there from the beginning. I didn't even think of that till right now. We are still called the party of principal. And of course, when we fuck up, I'm very sarcastic. Um, this is what I say. Hi, Eric. Thank you for joining us. Um, I go, and Eric will laugh because you know, Eric, Eric, I love you because, uh, well, I love most all of you guys but Eric let me tell you one reason why I love you because you don't take me too personally because you know on the LMC I get a bit spicy but you know I also don't mean anything by it it's just my personality because I'm rough I'm rough on my fellow LNC members but I love you all I actually think this is one of I've studied party history and I think this is one of the best LNC's we have so please keep that compliment in mind when I do get a little spicy um, it's only out of love of the party. So when when we mess up, you know, Eric knows I do this. I um I go the party of principle. Whenever we fuck up, that's what I say. And you'll probably hear me say that this weekend, Eric. So I'm just warning you. <laughs> it's out of love. So here we go. Um, the, the intro here is uh, the following material was prepared by members of the Libertarian Party's precursor, the Committee to Organize the Libertarian Party. The purpose was to provide a working document and we had we had went over this um the purpose of the temporary platform but but let's go through it a bit because i i'm really interested in some things now remember i'm going to draw attention it was last episode uh david nolan had reported that when they were adopting the permanent 1972 platform that there were two areas of intense dispute 
and now I'm forgetting what they are. I'm getting so old. One of them was Vietnam, if I remember correctly. And the other, I believe, was tariffs. Those were two areas where they decided to be silent. And that shocks me. But, hey, you know, it shocks me that there are people in the party who believe in mandatory vaccination. So, you know, here we go. Now, we're going to go into the first page. And let me get my little, uh, I got to hit second. Here we go. Okay, now you're going to notice something, and I hope you notice it right away. Preamble. We currently do have a preamble, but you notice something about this preamble? I ask these, I ask these leading questions because I think it's a way to help us all learn. Because remember, my whole purpose of doing this is for us to learn the history together. It says preamble, but the preamble, our current preamble, um, is almost like poetry. I'm trying to think of what the, the, the first sentence of the preamble is. On. You'd think I would know that, right? But here we go. This preamble is the statement of principles. The statement of principles used to be called the preamble. And since this was the temporary platform, it wasn't even the statement of principles yet. So I used to think that the Statement of Principles was a, a completely unique creation at the 72 convention, that it was entirely John Hosper's baby. But it wasn't. There was a proto-Statement of Principles in the temporary platform. And I think you'll be glad that this didn't end up being the Statement of Principles. If I hope most people listening here are familiar with Ayn Rand. If you're not, it's somebody you should be familiar with. I don't think you can understand the early party without being familiar with Ayn Rand, who hated the Libertarian Party, by the way. But I think it was an ego thing. And she thought we stole her ideas. Ain't no such thing as intellectual property, Ayn Rand, even though she thought that there was. But she had a certain vocabulary. If you ever in Atlas Shrugged, the most tedious piece of writing, I think, that exists in the libertarian canon is the speech of John Galt. I'm not saying it's not a good speech. I'm just saying it's tedious as fuck. It's a whole chapter. And if you listen to an audiobook, I think it takes like 45 minutes to go through this speech. And he repeats himself. Well, it's Ayn Rand, but in the character of John Galt, repeats himself. But uses certain buzz phrases. Now, you cannot read this preamble without hearing the tremendous influence of Ayn Rand. Let me give you some examples. We, the supporters of the Libertarian Party, rise to challenge the myth of the omnipotent state to defend the freedom and dignity of man. The citizen who is subservient to the state is either a ward or a slave. A ward if he receives from the state that which he did not freely earn. A slave if his life and property are placed at the disposal of the state. Tell me that is not frickin' Ayn Rand. The free man recognizes as his moral right the freedom to think, speak, and act as he and he alone chooses. Oh my goodness. So yeah. It is very Ayn Rand, which is great for that time, and it would sound completely horrible today. So I am glad we did not adopt Ayn Rand speak as the statement of principles. So we're going to go past that a bit because we're going to get more into the statement of principles that I'm suspecting already, seeing how we're 20 minutes into this, that this is probably going to be two episodes. It depends on how long you guys want to stick with me because you know... I'm like the Energizer Bunny when it comes to this stuff. I can just go and go. Now, the first section, civil liberty and civil order. We're not going to go through the whole thing because we're going to start to compare this to 1972. Let's do an overview. And I think the document will speak to us to see how we should examine it. So I'm just going to read aloud the subtitles. But you'll notice here there is a certain organization that we even follow through with today. There's a major title and then there's like a summary paragraph and then sub points 
over it. In theory, the platform could just be the titles with the summary paragraph because the subpoints under it only explicate out the summary paragraph. So the subpoints under civil liberty and civil order are crime in a free society, order, due process for the criminally accused, freedom of speech and the press, equal protection under the law, protection of privacy, the right to keep and bear arms, volunteer army, property rights. We're going to go back to property rights. Actually, I'm going to read property rights now. And the reason is I bring this up every time it's, it's appropriate. And I like to give this disclaimer. I don't do who's the true libertarian nonsense. Again, I don't believe people are libertarian ideas are. And people are more complicated than walking bundles of ideas. But, so this isn't said to throw anybody out of the party. It's just to say, each of us disagrees with the party on some points. And what I don't like is when we're not honest about where we disagree and we try to pretend that the party teaches something it doesn't. For instance, I'm pro-life. This isn't a pro-life party. I would be thoroughly dishonest if I pretended like it was. I have my own particular heresies that do not fall in line with the Libertarian Party platform when it comes to things particularly involving children and animals. I'm quite a bit a statist in those two things, and I'll readily admit it, that these are my deviations. So, with the rise of the Libertarian Socialist Caucus, I do think when it comes to the American Libertarian Party that those two terms do not go together. I got into this earlier where I talked about the difference between European, European libertarianism and American libertarians. That said, this isn't any kind of judgment on the people or you know, they should leave, nothing like that. But there are some people within that caucus who do not honestly deal with the party's position on property rights. The party has always held to property rights and it always will. You can believe rent is theft and whatever it is that you want. That's your deviation, like my deviation on things that have to do with children and animals and pro-life. So let's read with the temporary platform. So this is before even our first convention said about property rights. We hold that property rights are personal rights and as such are entitled to the same respect and protection as all other personal rights. We further hold that the owner of property has the full right to control, use, dispose of, or in any other manner enjoy his property without interference, until and unless his, the exercise of his control infringes upon the valid rights of others. We shall thus oppose restrictions upon the use of property which do not have as their sole end the protection of valid rights. This right to control, use, and dispose of includes being a landlord. And property rights we always held are equal to any other rights. I remember, and this isn't, this isn't a criticism of former Chair Sarwark. I'm just saying where I disagreed with him and where I think he's wrong. When I first came into the party and was still a minarchist, and I joined the Radical Caucus, I, I'll never forget Chair Sarwark saying that property rights are orthogonal to libertarianism. No, they are not. Not when we're talking about American li libertarianism. In that sense, American libertarianism is thoroughly right-wing when it comes to property rights. I'm sorry, not sorry, that's just the facts. We'll get into this more with the Statement of Principles. Okay, the next section, oh, and I didn't hit the page here, where I was reading from was right here, Property Rights. And this is all up on Elpedia, if it's easier for you guys to follow along there. If you want to follow along, if you put in the search box, um, Temporary Platform, it will come up. Okay, the next section, Trade in the Economy, same format. Here are the subsections. Subsidies, tariffs and quotas, private ownership of gold, public lands, 
taxation of single persons. I want to read this because I love this. Present federal income tax laws invidiously, A, I just love that we use the word invidiously. We've never used that today. Discriminate against single persons. Isn't that interesting? That's hardly ever brought up today, but it's true. Well, it can, it can discriminate against single persons because I get taxed as a single person, as a married person by my choice, but th that gets into the weeds a little bit. And then the next page here, the economy. Okay. And they wasted the rest of the paper. I guess they wanted to keep the headings on their own page. Okay. Next thing, domestic ills. That's again, terminology. That's very 1970s. We wouldn't say domestic ills today. We'd say domestic problems or something of that nature. Uh, pollution. That's another one I want to read because that's a bigger issue today than it was then. And I'm wondering if we can learn something from our early position. We support effective and judicious anti-pollution laws. Interesting. I don't think our platform, well, maybe it does. I'm, I'm trying to look through, through my memory. We very rarely say we support laws, so that's unusual. Such laws must, however, take proper recognition of other values necessary to a free and civilized society, and in light of those values, set forth objective standards for determining what are reasonable and unreasonable emissions in particular cases. Further, in recognition that much of our pollution problem has arisen because air and water are treated as free commodities, we shall work for the establishment of pricing mechanism based on property rights in the air and water, thus providing economic sanctions against pollution. We shall strenuously oppose all attempts to transform anti-pollution efforts into a general movement against technology or the use of anti-pollution efforts to destroy personal freedom. That is pretty good, actually. It threaded the needle well, I think. One problem I see with it that we clarified later, it almost seems like here that they would support some kind of carbon tax. Um, interesting. We'll have to see what the permanent platform does with this. Um, next thing, consumer protection. And number three, overpopulation. This is a scandal, the overpopulation plank. I can't remember the name of the book. Hopefully somebody in chat will know it. There was an alarmist book. It almost reminds me of some of the hyper alarmist uh, global warming people who had said like in two years, Miami would be underwater, or, you know, or, or Al Gore, you know, some of the outrageous things Al Gore said that were just completely ridiculous. There was a book back then that claimed the world would not be able to feed the population within a certain amount of time. I'm going to look this up because a lot of people bought into it. it. It, I don't know if it was called the population bomb. It might've been a lady wrote it. Maybe someone could do a quick Google search. I don't think that's the name of it though. There were a lot of anti-population books at that time, but that could be it, Dave, but it was very, very much the alarmist thing. And the libertarian party bought into it hook, line and sinker to our embarrassment. So here is what it said, overpopulation. We support an end to all subsidies for childbearing built into our present laws, such as deductions for dependents in the federal income tax and incremental allowances under the family assistance plan. This is, this is an embarrassment for two reasons. A, great, subsidies should go, but they defined subsidies wrong. Tax deductions are not subsidies. Tax deductions are a theft avoidance. And the Libertarian Party should never oppose tax deductions. We could oppose the discriminatory application of them. Like say, for example, not that this would ever happen, but let's say, for example, all white people in the country get a 10% tax deduction. We could oppose the absolutely bigoted, foundation there, but we still don't oppose tax deductions. Tax deductions are theft deductions. 
we, we, we should support people not being stolen from and then say everyone should be equally not stolen from. So A, a deduction is not a subsidy. And um, so we should never oppose uh, tax deductions. So that and putting it under overpopulation is just an embarrassment. I'm so glad something like that wasn't written into the statement of principles. Okay, next, foreign policy. One second here. I think I have. No, it's not the Paul Alrich. It was a lady. And for some reason, I think the word spring, like the season, was in the title. I could see the cover in my head. I might actually get that book and we can do it as a patron only thing because that's where I do my books. Um, let me see here. I'm trying to find. I have a thing where I could go next. Okay, here we go. So, um, foreign policy. This is weird. They have, they went, they, they deviated here from, and, and by the way, um, Dave, uh, the, the premise of this lady's book was really about agriculture and then modern, as humans are wont to do, we end up solving our problems with technology and modern farming alleviated that crisis. What's weird here is check it out. Um, it has a little bit of a different format, it has the heading of foreign policy, but then it has another big subheading of economic, which they didn't do in, in prior uh, sections. So economic, foreign aid, investment in foreign countries, Silent Spring, that's it. I knew Spring was in the title. My old brain goes, what was the lady's name? If you can um, look that up for me. I'm going to order that book. It'd be interesting to go through it. Um, investment in foreign countries, ownership and unclaimed property, currency exchange rates, and then it goes to another heading of military, which is under uh, foreign policy military alliances, military capability, the military industrial complex, private action, commitment of troops. You can tell this is quite lengthy uh, platform here. The Indochina war, which that's very uh, time specific. Then under diplomatic, diplomatic recognition, secession, and this is something that should be on our platform again, by the way, and the platform committee report that we didn't get to hear. And I am a bit butthurt about that because I was the chair of that committee and my committee worked their ass off. And the reason we did not get to hear the platform committee report is because the LNC overstepped its bounds and we had to spend the whole first day arguing about the allowance of the online delegates. Um, the United Nations and we supported the withdrawal from the United Nations. Some people don't agree with that today. Um, and that is it. So as you can see, the headquarters is still David Nolan's uh, house and that we charged for copies of the platform at that time because it was in a nice little booklet. And the dues at that time were $5, then $4 for students and included a subscription to LP News, which is the party's uh, monthly newsletter. Okay, so that's the temporary platform. Let's take a look quickly over the permanent one, and then we'll decide which sections we really want to, um, we really want to go through. So let's go here. Hey, I'm getting better with this program. You gotta admit it, my transitions are much smoother. Okay. Um, I want to go back here where I can do the pages. So the 1972 platform uh, adopted in convention, Denver, Colorado, June 17th through 18th, 1972. You can see I got this copy. You barely see it up there from the Alaska Libertarian Party while I was up there. And uh, just a point of trivia. Right now, most of the parties, and you guys might go, oh, I never noticed this, or maybe you'll go, dummy, I, we noticed this all along. What are you telling us this for? Most of the, the state affiliates today follow the format Libertarian Party of X, like Libertarian Party of Colorado, Libertarian Party of Florida. There are about eight 
I think, that don't follow that format and follow the format like you see here, Alaska Libertarian Party. In the beginning, most of them, or at least half, if I remember correctly, followed that format. Col the Libertarian Party of Colorado, for instance, used to be the Colorado Libertarian Party, and we changed our name. The reason we did it in Colorado was because of the way, and this is probably true for everybody, we wanted the word libertarian to appear first on the ballot when it said the party name. And oftentimes part of the party name got cut off. So when it was Colorado Libertarian Party, you saw Colorado first. That didn't suit us. And now it, it, libertarian comes first. And if it cuts off part of it, at least Libertarian Party gets seen. So that's just a point of trivia. I think the states today, the ones that I'm aware of that still do ex-Libertarian Party is Alaska. And Alaska isn't consistent with it. Sometimes they say Libertarian Party of Alaska. And when I was regional representative, I was like, you guys got to standardize. But I think they settled on Alaska Libertarian Party. Um, Wyoming does that, Wyoming Libertarian Party. I believe Montana does that. Arizona does that. Does Oklahoma, I, I can't remember if Oklahoma does or not. I think Arkansas does. If you guys can think of any other that follow the ex-Libertarian Party format instead of Libertarian Party of X, I'd be interested in that. I think one of the M ones does, maybe Missouri or Mississippi. Anyway. That's the kind of crap I, I love to, that's the trivia I love. All right, now you can see the statement of principles is now a statement of principles rather than the preamble. But when they were debating it in convention, they still called it the preamble. I'm not sure where this name change came in. I'm sure if I listen to those tapes again, it's hard to listen to them because the sound quality is so bad. And I cleaned up the sound quality quite a bit. If you guys are interested in hearing this for yourself, it is on Elpedia. If you search on Elpedia for National Convention 1972, at the bottom is the link to links to all the audio files. And you can download them. There's like, there's a lot of them. Now notice under Statement of Principles, it says adopted unanimously by the delegates, and I believe there were 89 delegates to the first National Convention. I think this may be the first and only time that things were adopted unanimously by libertarians. Now, I'm curious if they really mean unanimously or if they meant without objection. There is a big difference between the two, but back then they weren't quite as parliamentarily savvy. And that almost hurt us really badly, the fact that they weren't precise with parliamentary terms. but. We'll have to ask D. Frank Robinson. Maybe he could let us know whether it was actually unanimously or without objection. I don't think it's actually on the tape. That's something I'll need to listen to because I'm very curious about that. We're going to go back to the statement of principles. So let's skip that for right now, which hurts my heart to even say that. Okay. Now I want to, in my paper copy here, I want to kind of look at it page by page a little bit just so I can see what we can go over. Okay, first title, Individual Rights and Civil Order. You can see it's following the same kind of format. Main title, summary paragraph, and then subpoints. And before I forget, there's something I want to bring up here. As I said that the platform essentially could just be those main titles and the summaries because the sub paragraphs just explain what we mean. And I'm sure the brevity caucus would love for it to be that way. Let me tell you, and I'll probably bring this up multiple times over our years together going through party history. I oppose the brevity caucus. And let me explain why it's not that I, I particularly love, million page long platforms, but I'm going to give you a reason, two reasons why I oppose the Brevity Caucus. To me, the statement of principles is really all that we need. 
everything we hold can be derived from the statement of principles. But when I was, no, this, I wasn't on the LNC yet. This happened in either 2014 or 2015. I was elected for my first term as region one in 2016. And I'm going to say the name of the person who did it because they were an LNC person and were accountable, though I love this person to death. And it's Joshua Katz. Some kind of dispute arose. I believe it was about Daryl Perry. Daryl Perry was running for our nomination in 2016, and he refused to file with the FEC. And a dispute arose whether we would list him on our website as an official candidate because he was breaking the law. And we did. But the argument ended up being, why would we punish him for refusing to comply with the FEC because the FEC is illegitimate. We don't support the FEC. And Joshua Katz actually said in open session of the LNC, either or it was on the email list, but I think it was an open session. Are we really opposed to the FEC? Our platform doesn't say that. I still have PTSD over that statement. Yes, it does say that in principle. If we have to spell out every single alphabet soup that we're opposed to, our platform will be 100 pages long. But as long as we have LNC members saying, are we really opposed to the FEC? Then yeah, I want it all spelled out because I can't trust people to, to be logical. And something more recently happened where people said, are we really opposed to mandatory vaccinations? shoot me in the head. So that's why I oppose the Brevity Caucus. Because people apparently have to have it spelled out. To me, you should just be able to have the statement of principles. And I know like Daniel Hayes right now, if he's listening to this, is going to go, hallelujah. But practically we can't because then people will be arguing about whether we oppose the FEC or not. All right. So the title did change. It used to be civil liberty and civil order, and now it says individual rights and civil order, which I do think is an improvement. And that section used to have, let's see how many sub points, nine. We'll see how many it has here. Okay, first section, crime, then due process for the criminally accused, Freedom of speech and the press. Yeah, amen, Olga. Olga had said that's the whole point of being libertarian, oppose mandatory government anything. Uh, we shouldn't have to say that, but... Uh, protection of privacy, the right to keep and bear arms, volunteer army, property rights, unions and collective bargaining. There are eight points. I wonder what was omitted. So let's see. They probably just combined something because we have crime. Or What they deleted is in the temporary platform, it had crime in a free society. Then it had a separate paragraph called order, which said we support even-handed and consistent enforcement of laws designed to protect individual rights, regardless of the cause, evil or benevolent, for which these laws may be violated. They probably felt that that was redundant and, you know, maybe it was, but of course, are we really opposed to the FEC? So that is what changed there. Everything else appears to be the same. I mean, some of the wording might be a little different. So let's see if there's anything particularly interesting, at least I think interestingly in here. Yeah. Oh, Stephen, um, let me put your comment on the screen because I am not sure of what those abbreviations are. Stephen R. Lindberry, who is one of our um, OG libertarians here, it says, on the other hand, it took until the 87 convention to remove our opposition to, I don't know what H-E-U and C-A-B are, both of which were gone years earlier. That reminds me of Colorado. In Colorado, we got lazy. We really had a mess of a platform. I might tell the story of that one day. Um, and our platform up until 
2017, 2018, somewhere around there, still called for the legalization of pot long after Colorado legalized it and the legalization of gay marriage. And it was after um, gay marriage was legalized. And in Colorado, um, we had civil unions long before that. Colorado is interesting because we have, um, we still have, whatchamacallit, common law. So let's see. Due process for the criminally accused. There is something very interesting in here. Look at the last sentence. We look ultimately to the voluntary funding of this restitution. And no-knock laws were an issue in 1972. You see that there? Interestingly. For a long time, our platform really called for... Um, uh, what do you call it, restitutive justice rather than retributive justice. And we don't do that so much anymore, and I think we should. Um, let me put your comment up, Stephen, because others might be interested. Health, Education, and Welfare, a cabinet position, and CAB, Civil Aeronautics Board. Interestingly, interesting. Um, I'd be interested why it took so long to remove those. Um, I guess we'll get to those as we start going through history here. But that is very interesting. Okay. Um, and freedom of speech in the press. Let me go to that page here. Pretty, pretty standard. Um, we support repeal of pornography laws, which was a big deal in the 1970s. Okay. Volunteer Army. We do not call for that anymore, and we should. So, uh, yeah, we can get into that, uh, you know, more thoroughly if anyone wanted to. Okay, next page, property rights. That, pretty, that stayed the same. And unions and collective bargaining. Okay, just an oversight, Stephen said. And, okay. All righty. So, next title, trade in the economy. Let's see if that stayed the same. I would like to do a markup of how these two change. Yep, that title stayed the same. And it looks like, though, the content changed quite a bit. There were six subsections in the temporary platform. And in the 1972 platform, there are still six. But it looks like it changed quite a bit. I could tell you one big change here. Um, money. I don't know if that was that in. Yeah, that was a private ownership of gold that was in there um, under the temporary. But here, um, it mentions it a little bit more eloquently. We support the private ownership of gold and demand repeal of all legal tender laws. We still do that today. Uh, the economy. It's got a bunch of things there, but there's one I want to highlight here because it's on the next page. Because this one is something I've paid a lot of attention to. Okay, subsidies. Let's see how they define subsidies here. Ah, they got it right here. Check out the last sentence in subsidies. So they cured that horrible error that was in the temporary platform. Relief or exemption from involuntary taxation shall not be considered a subsidy. I'll drink to that. Now, I thought they said in the LP News that they couldn't agree on tariffs, but look here. Well, they said they couldn't agree on tariffs or trade restrictions, actually is the better word, to enemy nations. So it looks like they just ignored enemy nations because they did oppose tariffs here. So we support abolition of all tariffs and quotas, as well as the Tariff Commission and the Customs Court. Now, here's something it's going to be what I drink too fast. I'm sorry, I burped. Um, interim reform. Probably, if we if we don't break this up into two bonus episodes. The next episode will be about this. Um, interim reforms. 
In order to affect our long-range goals, we recommend, among others, the following interim measures. The adoption of the Liberty Amendment and provision for greater use of the referendum for reducing or repealing taxes. The Liberty Amendment is fascinating. That's kind of dropped off the radar, and I'm not sure why, so I want to do some research on it. Be I, I would love to see that revived. And I bet you most people here don't know what it was. I just learned a little bit what it was with a little bit of research to decide if I liked it. But here, and I'm trying to think, I get confused between the Colorado platform and the national platform because I think I added something like this. When I say I added it, I obviously I personally didn't. The delegates are the only ones who can add things, but I believe I sponsored the amendment that that added this, some language like this. But number six, long range goals. This paragraph, I want to kiss and have its baby because uh, just like, are we really opposed to the FEC? We have some libertarians today who try to deny that the party holds that taxation is theft and that we oppose all taxation. You want to know what the, it might have been the first press release. If it wasn't the first press release of this party, I'm going to need to find it. That might be a bonus episode as well. One of the very first press releases of this party, you want to know what it said? Crap, I wish I could find it quickly for you guys. Libertarians call for the repeal of all taxation. So don't give me that shit. We don't believe in the repeal of all taxation. Now, then when I present that proof to people who are ignorant of history, they go, well, that we used to hold that position. Use your noodle, people. Why did we used to hold that position, allegedly? Does that reason still exist today? Have we changed our statement of principles? No, we haven't. So check this out. Long range goals. <laughs> I hoist them on their own petard with this. Since we believe that every man is entitled to keep the fruits of his labor, we are opposed to all government activity, which consists of the forcible collection they have a typo here. It should say of money or goods from citizens in violation of their individual rights. Specifically, we support the eventual repeal of all taxation. Let me say that again in case I stuttered. We support the eventual repeal of all taxation. Damn it. We support a system of voluntary fees for services rendered as a method for financing government in a free society. But there's something I want to show you guys here. All right, listen, because this is important. We don't only just say here we support the eventual repeal, which is pragmatic, right? Because we realize it's not going to happen tomorrow of all taxation. They say why we support the eventual repeal of all taxation with a since statement. That first line, since we believe that every man is entitled to keep the fruits of his labor, ergo, we support the eventual repeal of all taxation. Do we still believe that every man is entitled to keep the fruits of his labor? Well, well. You want to know where that phrase comes from, my beautiful liberty people? It comes from the statement of principles. Let's go to that, shall we? Let me find it. Governments throughout history have regularly operated on the opposite principle, that the state has the right to dispose of the lives of individuals and the fruits of their labor. Even within the United States, all political parties other than our own grant to government the right to regulate the life of individuals and seize the fruits of their labor without their consent. So. This long range goal is citing the statement of principles, which still exists today. So we still believe that every man is entitled to keep the fruits of his labor. Ergo, we still support the eventual repeal of all taxes. Sorry, not really. If somebody doesn't like that, you don't have to like it. I don't like that we're explicitly pro-choice. 
You want to know what? The platform doesn't give a shit about my feelings. Taxation is theft. That is the party position. Deal with it. All righty. Sorry, that's kind of like my uh, hobby horse because it gets me mad when people try to misrepresent what the party believes. Domestic ills. Let's see if that, that title remained the same. And there were only three sections. Let's see if that awful overpop ugh, overpopulation remained. <sighs> it's funny. They contradict themselves here. Let's just, so you got the same three, pollution, and now, huh, notice something here in the pollution section? They no longer support laws in the pollution section. I thought that was weird in the temporary platform. The word laws no longer appears there. So let's read that pollution section because let's see how that changed. We support the development of an objective system defining individual property rights to air and water. We hold that ambiguities in the areas of these rights, e.g. concepts such as public property, are a primary cause of our deteriorating environment. Whereas we maintain that no one has the right to violate the legitimate property rights of others by pollution, we shall strenuously oppose all attempts to transform the defense of such rights into any restriction of the efforts of individuals to advance technology, to expand production, or to use their property peacefully. Okay. Now, overpopulation. We support an end to all subsidies for childbearing built into our present laws. Now, remember, the one in the temporary platform gave an example of tax exemptions for children. It no longer says that. They actually give examples of actual subsidies. You have a good night, Julian. Check out the rest of it when, when you get a chance. So the subsidies they list is all welfare plans and the provision of tax-supported services for children. Those are actual subsidies. And check it out here. Here is the party's first position on abortion. Now notice they didn't have it under bodily autonomy or anything like that. We first supported abortion because of overpopulation. That is dystopian as fuck. So, we further support the repeal of all laws restricting voluntary birth control or voluntary termination of pregnancies, catch this, during their first hundred days. That was the original party position. But remember, 1972 is when Roe v. Wade was passed. I believe it was September of 72. This platform was passed in June. We shall oppose all coercive measures to control population growth. I'm assuming they're referring to things like the one-child policy. Now, there are two extra sections here in domestic ills that were not in the temporary platform. Education. We support the repeal of all compulsory education laws. We would not have the balls to do that today. And poverty and unemployment. We oppose all government welfare and re relief projects and aid to the poor programs inasmuch as they are not within the proper role of government and do contribute to unemployment. Okay, that's... Okay. You'd think that would be in a separate section, but okay. Foreign policy. Now, this is the one that got all weird in the temporary platform, and it does here, too. They have those weird sub-subtitles. And it looks like they condensed this down a bit. So the economic section used to be four points, and now it's three. They deleted investment in foreign countries. I don't really know why, but okay. Okay, then military. 
The military and the temporary platform was six sections. It's only two here. I think that's because the other one got really, really wordy. If you remember, it was uh, military alliances, military capability, the military industrial complex. That probably needed to be condensed down. So now it's just military alliances. And it's funny. Huh. Check this out. This is different than what we hold now. Actually, our platform now is better. And in general, I think the earlier platforms were better. But it says we should enter into alliances only with countries whose continued free existence is vital to the protection of the freedom of all American citizens. That is a license for terror. Um, our current platform, I believe, says entangling alliances with none, like the founders of this country said. Under such an alliance, the United States may offer the protection of its nuclear umbrella. Yeah. No, thank you. Not today, Satan. All right. Well, that was a bit squirrely. Okay, next thing. Diplomatic. How many sections did that used to be? Three. And it is still just three. And secession is in there. Which is really different. So the former thing on secession said, we support recognition of the right to secede. Political units or areas, why not people, okay, which do secede should be recognized by the United States as independent political entities where secession is supported by a majority within the political unit, mob rule, and the new political entity meets the three criteria for full de jure recognition set above. And those are free and open elections, unrestricted immigration, or wait, emigration. Okay, I'm going to show my ignorance here. Is emigration leaving and immigration coming in? I think so. So unrestricted emigration. Sufficient freedom of the press to allow for peaceful change. So those are the three criteria they had at that time. Now, the, the, the 1972 platform says, We shall support recognition of the right to secede. The, um, thank you, Eric. That, yeah, that was correct. Em emigration, EM, is not a word we hear very often today. Um, political units or areas which do secede should be recognized by the United States as independent political entities. Okay, that's the same. Number one, where secession is supported by a majority within the political unit. That is so collectivist. Um, the Colorado platform has, um, a secession plank, though we don't call it secession because that word's been completely um, trashed by the Civil War. Um, I think we call it self-determination. Uh, the majority does not attempt suppression of the dissenting m minority, and the government of the new entity is at least as compatible with human freedom as that which it seceded, and that's how they're solving the, the Civil War taint here. But... Um, Logically, libertarians should support individual secession, not just of majorities. All right, and then the United Nations. So it didn't change terribly much. And in most respects, it changed for the better. It mentions taxation, which the other one really it touched upon. It mentioned the Liberty Amendment where it got icky was that thing about the nuclear umbrella. I mean, there were, there were a couple stinkers in here. But in general, I think it was an improvement on the temporary platform, but it really didn't change terribly, terribly much. So um, I don't know if there's any sections anyone here would like to go over. So I'm going to give a chance for chat before 
before we get into the statement of principles. And also, I'd like your opinion as to whether we should even get into the statement of principles tonight or whether we should save that. Or maybe both get into it briefly tonight and do, because statement of principles is kind of like my wheelhouse. I traveled the country doing a two hour long presentation on just the statement of principles. Well, up to two hours. I cut it down depending upon what the convention who invited me needed. So it doesn't look like there's any questions here. Let's at least do the introduction to the statement of principles and we will see where we go because I want to tell you guys my woo story. Okay, let me see here. See what I have on my, what I have queued up next. Okay, here we go with the woo. If you don't know this story, you're going to freak out a little bit. In, on Elpedia, we had a really shitty photocopy of a typed version of the original statement of principles that appeared to be from the 1972 convention. But nobody knew where we got that photocopy from. And actually, since then, I found a photocopy of another version. So it appeared that these were probably handouts at the convention. But where we got it, we didn't know. And I was always curious about that and wondering where the original went. Now, I hadn't been in the practice like I am now of searching aid books or eBay for LP historical items. We had just started LP. LPD had been around for a while, but excuse me, we just started revamping Elpedia. Need to tell the story of Elpedia at some time. And the records had just made their way here. So I was busy. But for some reason, I was bored, you know, ADD. And I decided I was going to look on eBay for some Libertarian Party stuff. I had never done that before. This was the first time. And here is what came up. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but it says, and I'm going to pull it up here on my screen because I didn't print this out so I can read it a little bit more clearly because I've got old eyes. Let me find it here. eBay listing. Here we go. It says preamble for the Libertarian Party. It didn't say statement of principles, but remember what we said, how it was originally called the preamble. And uh, it was for sale. And you can see the date here when I did this. It was 2017. And I think the um, we could look at the date that the historical committee was constituted. It was only a few months before this. Out of California. And it says in the description, this is the first draft of John Hosper's preamble for the Libertarian Party written in June of 1972. And there's a photo. That photo is original, is an original copy of that really weird photocopy we had already. So I knew it was undoubtedly genuine because all of the little handwritten notes matched. The one thing that was different is what appears to be a coffee stain <laughs> on it that it, it, it obtained at some point. So I was freaking the hell out. I was like, here's the original statement of principles. Oh my God, it's the first night. So I knew I had to have it or we had to have it, but I was broke. So it wasn't going to happen. So I put out the, the, the bat signal and, uh, some people from the historical committee started bidding on this thing. And as you can see, the bids got up to $430. So let's take a look here because I do have the bidding history. I saved it. One second here. Next scene. Let me find that little key. So here we go. Here's the bidding history. And at the last minute, it got sniped from my friends who were bidding on it. As you can see, it was at 425. 
at 209.05, and one second later, it was sniped, $430. We were heartbroken. <laughs> the wailing and gnashing of teeth. But we comforted ourselves with the fact that at least we knew it existed and that somebody must have loved it if they paid $430. Because I think the initial bid was like $10. Like the initial listing. Oh no, starting price $150, but I think that was the initial bid. I don't think it was $150 to begin with. So we were heartbroken. And then three days later, a friend of mine writes me and said, said, hey, by the way, I'm the one who picked up the statement and principles. And I'm like, dude, you know, you guys probably could have gotten this for like under a hundred bucks if you weren't all bidding against each other and not telling each other. So whoever had this lucked out, they were probably wondering, what the hell? Who is all these people that want this thing? So that was Lelius Rose of Washington. And he uh, then donated it to the party. You know, that was a $430 donation he made to the party, which is where this document belonged. Uh, with the back at its home. But it gets, so we were happy, we got it. But I was always going, where has it been all these years? Who is this person that had this document? I, I had to know the provenance of this thing. I knew it was genuine because we had that photocopy, but I was like, where, where did this come from? So I'll get to that in a moment, but we did get it framed and it is now hanging up at headquarters if you go there you can see it and you can see here once i got it framed obviously that's me in the middle with that document framed you can see the distinctive coffee stain to the left of me is d frank robinson one of the founders of the party who remembers that original document and also to my other side is chair sarwar because this was taken at an lnc meeting then we heard from the lady who had it and I couldn't make this story up. Sometimes truth is indeed stranger than fiction. So she said she was more than glad to tell us where she got it. And I want to give you a better look at this original, this original document. Where it is? Here we go. So there's a good scan of it that um, I obtained after... And I have a super, super high resolution scan of it um, that's just way too big to download. It like takes an hour to download. It's like we paid a lot to get a super good scan of it. But as you can see, there's all kinds of handwritten on there. It says, uh, first draft of Statement of Principles, June 1972. Not sure who wrote that, though I have a good idea. You can see there were changes made on the floor, which the LP News we read two episodes ago talked about so yeah those are that's hosper's handwriting which we learned in that lp news so yeah this is what we have on the back of it is kind of glued some black construction paper point of trivia i did meet uh stanley i can't remember his last name oliver who was a student of John Hosper's, said he was present when that coffee stain was made. So we have also found the provenance of the coffee stain. So we did hear from the young lady who was selling this item about where it came from. Her parents were one of the founders or close to founders of the California party. Their last name was Gottlieb. The mother's name was Shirley Gottlieb, the man's name is leaving me at the moment, but it was the Gottliebs. And when she grew up, she remembers John Hospers coming to their home. She grew up in the Libertarian Party. And her parents passed away. I believe Shirley passed away last. And she was clearing out the home. And she noticed in one of the rooms, there was a photocopied picture of Ayn Rand framed on the wall. Now, I'm sure all of you have seen photocopies of pictures. They're shitty. 
and particularly old photocopies it's just like blobs blobs of black you know just awful and she thought to herself my parents must be losing it why would they frame a photocopied photo of Ayn Rand you get a real photo so she took it down and she wanted to save the frame and when she took the photocopied photo out this document was hidden behind it you can't make this shit up so apparently it had been sitting behind a photocopy photograph of Ayn Rand framed in the Gottlieb's home for nearly 50 years she had said John Hospers probably gave it to her parents because they were very good friends as a memento and by weird chance I was looking on eBay and it ended up in my hands the person who was obsessed with the statement of principles way before this I had always said if my ass were bigger I would tattoo the statement of principles on my ass and it came home right like everything converged if you don't think that's woo I think it's woo it's kismet at the slightest I mean at the mo uh, you know at the least where I happened to be looking and we got it and it happened to you know everything just happened and now at the 50th anniversary the statement of principles is back home in the David Nolan Memorial Building and yep I delivered it there personally and to me that is just fate and I truly truly love love that story and a lot of things like that has happened at least when it comes to the statement of principles and um David Nolan and things like that um somebody who had known David uh Emily Goldberg of Arizona I'm glad you appreciated that story Lindsay it gives me the goosebumps each time to realize the odds of this it's like it was waiting for me that's the only I'm sorry that's the way I look at it people could think that's somewhat conceited um I was just a, an instrument but um Emily Goldberg who had known David because there's a whole other story there as well had said that ever since we met and particularly when I got involved in the Libertarian Party she is absolutely convinced that David is working through me and she senses a lot of his spirit in me which is the biggest compliment that anyone could pay me and before she said that I had already felt that I have and I'm not a woo person but I have sensed David's presence guiding a lot of my work and there's no greater honor than I think I could have as an instrument I'm not special I just happen to be somebody who loved history who came along at the right moment in time because I'm absolutely convinced that if I hadn't made that motion at the time I did that these records would all be destroyed by now because there were several people on the LNC who were saying things like why don't we just throw it all out and I do think they passed the motion and put these records into my care because they thought it would keep me busy and I would shut the fuck up on some other things because I've been a pain in the ass on the LNC and they learned it didn't that my capacity for being a pain in the ass is boundless but yeah this is one reason why I have uh, such a connection to this project so um, yeah there is more and you want to know what I'm getting tired it's an hour and a half I think this is a perfect way to end this episode we will continue with the statement of principles it will not be tomorrow or this weekend we have an LNC meeting this weekend uh, the login information is on my secretary page and my personal page I invite you all to attend that meeting I'm thinking tomorrow night 
that I might do a recap, a live recap. Maybe a couple other LNC members will join me, particularly ones maybe that didn't agree on motions. I would like to have a little bit of back and forth so people can um, understand like decisions that were made. I wanted to write here. If you want to do some background research, I wrote this article on the Statement of Principles for LPDA. If you go to LPDA and look up the Statement of Principles, uh, you, uh, you know what I'm saying? You can, you, you can uh, be prepared for uh, our next episode. All right, so uh, I think that is a good spot to end. Hopefully you agree. I've got work, work to do. I need to get prepared for the meeting tomorrow. I need to make sure I actually sleep tonight because actually, you know, secretary is tough at the LNC meeting. I do hope to see you there. I'd love to hear your thoughts on whether you'd like a recap. I wish Eric was still here because maybe he would have wanted to join me. So um, now, you know, it's my uh, typical beg session. So I hope you'll stick around for a few minutes to hear me beg for support or otherwise I will see you soon. So here we go. Please like, no subscribe, and share. Us. It really helps Blah, my down, YouTube statistics boss. and it spreads the word of the Libertarian Party boss. because there will be somebody who will see Call these videos and get interested yeah, in the party. Boss. If you would like me, as you can tell, I already put hundreds of hours into this, but I would like to do this. And in order to do that, I need to start the transition where this is more of what I do for at least partially a living. So if you can, um, and Olga, I'll let you know that. I see your question, so just, uh, while I'm on a roll, let me just finish this. If you can financially support me, it would mean a great deal to me. You can do it for as little as a dollar a month on Patreon or Subscribestar. The average subscriber is $5 a month, but you can do it for a dollar a month. I do have patron-only content. All of my book reviews and going through books will be done on Patreon. I've already put up some content um, going through Judge Gray's book, All Rise. I'll be recording more tonight for the patrons. You can see, as I have up on the screen here, other ways that you can help. And this is a thank you to my current patrons. These people right now, it, it encourages me. When I see the emails saying that I'm a patron, it usually comes right when I'm getting discouraged. So, so that is great. But coming up here, I think I have coming up on the screen. Yeah, one second. I'm going to make this a little faster. I think this will talk too long. Yes, this is what we're going on, going over in my patron street. Uh, thing. Uh, all rise. So Olga, what program do I use to video cast? It's a fantastic program. It's complicated though. The, uh, the learning curve is steep, but it's well worth it. It's called the eCam, but it is Mac only. Um, I don't know. There is an equivalent Windows um, program, but I don't know the name of it because I'm a Mac girl. Um, I am that's the understatement of the year. Like I am so Mac freaked out that I own the email address of I drank the Kool-Aid at Mac.com. Yes, that's me. I used to do an Apple fan blog of I drank the Kool-Aid um, dot com and I was an Apple news reporter for World of Apple for for quite a bit. So yes, eCam. And uh, a program because this is my phone actually that is broadcasting it, uh, there's a program called shoot that then mirrors your phone. So yeah, that, that's what I use. I love it. If you go back to live streams, maybe five streams ago, you could tell the learning curve is steep. I think this is the first time I've done it without a hitch. And I use, let me um, see if I can put this up here without fucking anything up. Maybe not. Oh, I could do it on the side camera, maybe. Well, let me see if I could pull this up. I also use, you can see this here, something called Stream Deck. And it has hotkeys that allow me to do all of the transitions. And it's got all the sound effects and all that on it. So, you know, with these little keys here, like, ooh, yeah, you know, sound effects. Ah! I can do it with a touch of the button. 
which is, which is I think, cool. Um, I'm trying to find one of those uh, uh, sound sound effects that I super, super like. I, I don't hardly use them. I've got to, uh, you know, I, I've got to uh, learn, learn them a, a little bit better. Oh, here's a parrot going, really? I love that parrot. But anyway, I'm going to take off. Thank you for listening to my beg for um, subscribers. I know everyone is very financially strapped, so I get it. There are podcasts or YouTube channels I listen to that I would love to subscribe to, and I simply can't afford it. I'm behind in my mortgage. But if you can, it's the libertarian thing to do. So good night, everyone. I so appreciate you, and maybe I'll see you tomorrow for an LNC recap. Have an awesome night. You gotta take what you're given, that's how we live it. Don't be mad at the system, it's simply how we've existed. I hear a lot of people talking like they politicians and choose to be an accountant because it's safe in a business. 